Carl Rove, former Deputy Chief of Staff to President George W. Bush, and a Fox News contributor. Carl, great to have you with us uh, this afternoon. Um, you know, let's start by looking back at, at this tweet that then-candidate Joe Biden put out there. Speaking of tweets, uh, as Jen Psaki just was, so on February the 1st, 2020, we all remember we began the lockdowns in the middle of March, right? So it says, uh, Joe Biden wrote, Trump further diminished the U.S. in the eyes of the world by expanding his travel ban. This new, quote, African ban is designed to make it harder for black and brown people to immigrate to the United States. It's a disgrace, and we cannot let him succeed. Your thoughts on this? Well, not only did he say that, but he also had his future running mate, Kamala Harris, also blasted it as a racist, as did Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. So politicizing it a pandemic and just for political advantage in a presidential campaign may turn out to bite you, and it's certainly biting a big time here. Uh, he, he, President Trump was a bigot for having a travel ban extended to South uh, to Africa. Now he, President Biden is in a position of having uh, put a travel ban from Africa. So uh, he, he's 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 do every bit of criticism for being a hypocrite on this. It's a sign of how bad it was last year and how there's going to be an overhang from having politicized uh, the COVID for for advantage in a presidential campaign. Yeah, uh, um, that, that also, ban. I, go ahead, go ahead, Carl. Well, the, the, also, the, the, this is got. I just returned from South Africa. I was in uh, Africa through the middle of Dece of November, and uh, you know they were very grateful for. I happened to be staying at a camp uh, at, in outside of Kruger National Park with a guy who was the head of the South African Tourism Association, and had gotten them taken off the, the British red list, which prohibited travel from the UK to South Africa, and to meet with these people who had been hit by COVID. Uh, the camps had been shut down. They'd lost their livelihood for a year. They were enthusiastic about having visitors come back to their country. And now uh, for, they're going to be penalized for their transparency in revealing this. And I, I feel sorry for them. Um, you know, with regard to how Americans uh, perceive this president's handling of COVID, because really this, that was one of the strongest uh, things that, that Joe Biden ran on, was that he would handle COVID better than the previous president, President Trump did. But, you know, when you look at the number of deaths, there's actually more deaths in 2021, 413,000 uh, compared with 362,000 in uh, 2020, and we experienced it for almost the entire year in 2020. Disapproval, approval ratings for handling of COVID. Back in May, uh, this president had a 64 percent approval rating on COVID. Now he's down to 48 percent, uh, a bit underwater on that. So how does that impact this presidency, Carl? Well, it, it impacts it a lot. His overall approval rate is in 43. People think he's doing a lousy job in the economy. They don't think he's doing any kind of a job on uniting the country. And now they're beginning to think that he's doing a so-so job on fighting COVID. Uh, and those were the three big pillars of his campaign. Elect me because the guy in the office today is screwing up on COVID. I'll return. I'll return our politics to to uh, bipartisanship, and I will. And things will be normal, and I'll do a better job on the economy than this guy does. And the president is underwater on two out of three, and he is not in good shape on on the third one, COVID. Think about that. He has lost basically about uh, a third of the people who approved of him earlier this year on COVID now disapprove of him. That's a pretty significant drop. So even while his number is higher um, on COVID than it is among his overall approval rating, it, 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 his failure to deliver on COVID is what's pull, helping pull that number down along with the economy. There's a lot of questions. I mean, nobody thought that it was going to be around as long as it has throughout the course of this year. You have the vaccines, a lot of questions about the booster rollout, and now this travel ban rollout and whether or not those those were well-timed. But he says lockdowns are off the table. And that was, a you know, he was very much in favor of the lockdowns for a long time. Now he has changed his tune. Watch this. I'll be putting forward a detailed strategy outlining how we're going to fight COVID this winter, not with shutdowns or lockdowns, but with more widespread vaccinations, boosters, testing, and more. Quick final thought there, Carl. Well, he promised us we'd be all vaccinated by the 4th of July, and this thing would be in the rearview mirror. Uh, Overpromising and underdelivering is a big problem for any politician. It's a big one for this president. Carl Rove, thanks as always. Good to see you, Carl. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.